Ladies in Tech, your go-to place for Iris Logix 500 tutorials. So this is a program we want to write. We have a board here with eight lights on it with a start, stop, and a freeze. When the operator presses a start button, the lights begin to do a sequence, a half second each, and a tracer motion from one through light eight. If the operator were to press the stop button, that motion would stop, and the operator would have to press start again in order to begin the same trace all the way through. Now at this time, if the operator presses a freeze button, it will hold at the light that it's currently on until the operator releases a freeze button and then it continues on its course. Now if the operator presses a freeze button while on light one, the direction of the trace reverses. And the only way to get it back to the forward again is if you press the freeze button while on light one. So this is a program that we're going to write and it goes all the way around again. So stay tuned as we go on to the ladder logic. Let's move on to programming and ladder logic. The first part of the program, I want to create a run bit. The run bit is going to tell me when the sequence should be running. So let's do up that logic now. I will insert a run and we'll enter the start push button. So the start push button is located on input i colon zero slash one. So when the start push button is pressed, our run bit will true and it will stay true until the stop press button push button is pressed. So let's add that in right now. And to create a memory bit location for our run bit, which is going to be o colon zero slash zero, and I call that run. You must remember that our b, our binary bit location, are just a storage in a location in memory that we can use to store logic, such as the run bit. The stop push button I'm going to put in here is located at i colon zero slash two, and it is wired normally closed, so I want to use examine if closed, and I'm going to call this my stop. So there's our logic there for our run bit. Now in order to control these lights, I'm going to use a retentive timer. A retentive timer will keep count of how many seconds and will not lose its time if the logic in front of it goes false. So let's set up what our retentive timer is supposed to time. It's going to time when our run bit is true. We're going to put that timer in now. We need to give it a name, T4 colon 0. It's our first timer available. I'm going to call it light timer. Or the time base. We're going to put the time base in milliseconds, and the preset is going to be 4 seconds. Remember, we have 8 lights that come on one after another, and they're each on for half a second. So that equals 4 seconds in total. We have a component in our program that when the operator presses the freeze button, it stops on the light. So right now, I'm going to put that logic in for our timer. I'm going to stop the time when we press the freeze button. The freeze button is going to be a normally open push button located at i colon zero slash three. Now let's look at the logic of when we actually want to reset this retentive timer. We know that once it counts up to four seconds, we want it to go back to zero. We also know that when we press our stop push button, we want it to go back to zero. And we also know that on first download, or when we power up our PLC, we want it set back to zero. So let's do that now. So we have several instances. We have when the timer's done, so T4 colon zero slash done. We're going to set it back to zero. We also want to do that when we press the stop push button. And remember the stop's wired normally closed, so we have to use an examine if open for when it's actually pressed. And we also want to do this when we first download or power up. So how do we do that? We use our first pass bit. So s colon 1 slash 15 is the location of that status bit. And at that time, we're going to reset that timer, retentive timer. Remember, it's retentive. That means it keeps its value when the logic in front of it is gone false. So at this time, or any of these three conditions, we want to reset that t4 colon 0. Next, let's create the logic to turn on light number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my output for O colon 
0 slash 1. So that's located on the base unit. Bit number 1 is going to be my light 1. I'm going to give it de a description of light number 1. So when this light number 1 is on, it's going to be when it's, if it's in forward, because we've got to remember we have a forward and reverse. So let's start with the forward first. So if it's in forward, so that's going to be when this retentive timer is between the time of what? 0 and 500 milliseconds. So that's between 0 and half a second. Light 1 should be on. So let's do up that logic now. It has to be in run mode. So let's grab our run mode. And let's go to our compare commands. And let's grab our limit. This limit command allows us to turn something on if it's within the allowed limits. So the lower limit is going to be 0 seconds. The higher limit is going to be 500 milliseconds, which is half a second. And what are we testing? We are testing the accumulated value of this timer above. So T4 colon 0 dot ACC. And it's in between these allowable limits, this light number 1 will come on. But that's only true if you're in forward. So let's put that logic in here too. We'll build the logic of forward a little bit further down. But right now for this step, let's put a bit in here called forward. And I'm going to use another memory bit location to call that. So 0 slash 1. Let's do that. And I'm going to call this forward. So whatever logic I use for my forward and reverse will be stored on that bit. So if it's in forward and it's between this limit, that light will come on. So now, let's also do the logic for when it's in reverse. So if it's in reverse, we're going to grab a bit, we're going to call it reverse, and I'm going to store that at b3 colon 0 slash 2. We're going to call this reverse. And we're going to set a limit for the reverse. So we're going to use the same timer for both. But now, it's going to be going the opposite way. So our low limit for our reverse is going to be 3,500. And our high limit is going to be 4,000. So it's the opposite way around that clock. And that's going to be our logic. So let me continue on and do this for light number 2. I'm just going to simply copy this and bring it down here. And we're going to do this for light number 2. But light number 2 our limits are now, our lower limit is 500 for when we're in forward to 1000. And then when we're in reverse, it's going to be the opposite. So now we're at 3500 and 3000. I change our light here. We're going to call this light 2. Edit description light number 2. And let's do this for light number 3. Light number 3, we left off at our low limit, which is 1000. Our high limit is going to be 1500. For our forward and for our reverse, our high limit is going to be 3000. And our low limit is going to be 2500. And that's for light number three. I'm going to go ahead and continue the rest of the lights because they're all the same, just the change in the limits for each of them and the actual output. All right, we want to do quick, one little quick change here. I put an examine if closed. We want to change that to an examine if open. We want it to stop timing only when you press that button. And it is a wire normally open, so we need to change that instruction type to an examine if open. All right, I've completed all the logic for each of the lights. You can see I set up the limits for each light depending if they're forward or reverse and when they should be on. So we got light one, two, three, four. I'm going to give this a description since we're here. Light number five. You can see the differences in the limits for when it's in forward and reverse. I also try to include a hard copy of the program as well on my blog. So make sure you check out my WordPress at ladiesintech.com and uh, that way you can get yourself a hard copy of the program. A little bit easier to follow than just following the video, right? Okay, so the last thing that we need to do in our program is set up some logic for when we are in forward or when we are in reverse. 
we have to remember that when we go into four in reverse, we need to be on light number one. And we also need to press the freeze button at the same time as being on light number one. So if we're on light number one and we press the freeze, what are we going to do to capture that? Well, I'm going to use a counter. So let's put that in. There's several ways you can do this, but I'm going to use a counter. So I'm going to use a C5 colon zero is what I'm going to use for the name. And I'm going to call this uh, Ford Reverse Count. You go OK, and I put a preset of two. If you're on light one and you press the freeze button, this is going to count up. And to make it nice and clean, I'm going to put a ONS in front of it. So one shot riser. I'm going to just give this a B3 colon zero slash I don't know, 14 will give us the address. We're going to give us as our one shot. So we'll only allow one clear scan of that logic if it's true to give a good clear count up. So now let's use that logic from that counter. So we're going to use another comparison command. We'll use an equal. And our source is going to be the accumulated value of that counter dot ACC. If it equals zero, we're going to be in forward. If it equals one, we're going to be in reverse. One thing about the counter we have to remember is retentive, so we have to reset it. So when do we want to reset it? Well, the reason why I put it to 2 is so that we can reset it when you hit it the next time and it goes back to 0. So we're going to reset it when it is done. And we're going to give that a check mark, make sure we have nothing wrong. All right, we're going to download this program so you can see how it works. All right, we got the program downloaded and I'm putting it in run mode. So let's go through and we're going to press the start button right now and we can watch the run bit come on and the timer start timing. And you can see it is timing. It's really hard to catch these guys because they go so fast. But they are turning on and a good way to show you is let's go to our output card and you can see them cycling through 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now if I hit my freeze button to actually freeze it on a number, you can see now it's held at light number three. I let go of my freeze button and it continues its sequence. Now in order to get it to reverse, we have to hit the freeze button at the same time as light one is true. Now this is tricky because it does go very fast, so please bear with me. Now you can see I have it going through in reverse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. In order to get it back around again, I have to hit that. And there you go, it returns to the other way. All right, let's also see how the stop button works. So let's press your start again. All right, so we're going through our sequence, and we can see in our output all the way through the sequence. If I press my stop button, it should shut them all off and you have to press start again before it begins. So let's do that. I hit my stop, shut them all off, and nothing happens. I hit my start button again and it goes through. Now the same thing will also happen if the PLC turns off and you come back on. It won't be stuck in the middle of the sequence. It will start with nothing on. There you go. This is a logic that solves the problem of the tracer lights and be able to freeze them or reverse them if you hit the freeze button at the same time as light number one is activated. Well, thank you for joining me. Before you go, make sure you subscribe so you can follow right along with me and learn how to write Ladder Logic and RS Logics 500. Thank you.